Okay, it's time for this week's Milo Murphy Vlog, Vlog, Milo Murphy Vlog, for the first time having two lemon at one. Two lemon that I have not seen before, I mean. So, today we have, well, we're gonna go one lemon at a time, and I'll have to answer when I start talking about the next one, or start focusing on that one, at least. Anyway, first up, we have the Dr. Gone File, written by Joshua Puret, Pure Puret. Pure, pure, whatever, how you pronounce it. Yeah, go and look up the code of Milo, um, and the crypto camera, and, um, you know, and crypto looking gag are going to a movie, the Dr. Gone File, which is based off a TV show that they really like. But of course, Kara is very much worried about Murphy Claw taking effect and all that crazy and So, look up the code that we're looking forward to because when the show came out, they gave a goal at the character again, one of the crying ones would. Revolve around a show called the Doctor Gone File, Doctor Gone and Time Ape, um, and it's basically Doctor Who parody. The Kafka Bicky confirmed that. They say it's the latest incarnation of a 50-year spanning series. Again, I've seen the Wii version of it, and it has a lot of complicated backstory and a fandom. Oh, my boy, we'll get to that. And uh, that the whole episode is half about the law thing and half about the show, its fandom. And all the stuff that I'm can get. And this is definitely an episode where the Wing Law thing is more of a a bone and long guy something else. Because even after like, like underground when the Wolf Yambi woke all about that is just kind of football getting. The underground is going away to get it into the underground mobile thing, but still roughly wrong out here. It revolves around it, but they're gone for more emphasis on another element. Um that would be the show and the fans, and they definitely and, um, I'm gonna get look at my favorite one so far. Um, it had a lot of humor, but it also got a little extra. And that one extra element, well, the two, actually, but the one would definitely be the, um, the, the show and the fandom and all the, the great jokes we do with it. This is basically the 11 version of Nurgle with Fever, because that episode had, it's my favorite thing for that episode, mainly because of age and really have a lot of fun in fandom by making fun of it, but also celebrating it. You know, they do make a lot of jokes about how crazy people can get and stuff like that. But they also kind of celebrate it and how it can be good. And they kind of doing roughly the same thing. We're going to uh, make a subplot while Karen Miles and everything. Looking and Gak are getting acquainted with Karen and talking to some super fans. And they um, make a lot of jokes about the complicated history of the show. The fan theory and whatnot, and how we get shot back for being newbie. There's a lot of great jokes there. The best joke we have to kind of there. But the stuff from Rupin Guy has a lot of fun stuff to it. Um, um, oh, I could poem. I should probably tell you something interesting that happened. So, we already know it's going to be a quarter plot to theory again. They, we already know about the pistachio protector from the future. They're going to be part of the theory again. Each Uncle Bar has got a reference to pistachio. And they're going to the cup go in the next. But here's the thing. You all remember how Gravity Falls were in Blendon Blandon, and he appeared in the background of Come Up and Come before his debut to for a hint at it, which they think they're going to own Nibble or thing in Futurama Pilot. Um in our episode for that one, I think. Um you know. Well, this show doing the old version. Sort of. Each set of code called far and had the potential spectrum in the background, the Agnum Kelm doing their thing, but only in rerun. That's why right, only in their rerun version of the Epic Code, or at least the second run version, are they there. When they originally air, they aren't there. When they rerun, they are. Don't ask me how they score that out to Nick D, but wow. That should give people an extra incentive to watch the episode again to see if they can spot them. It's the weirdest game of Wearing Wall ever. I can show do that. Tyrant Street did that well with Matt Jack being the backer of every episode before it did you. Show could have done that, you know, hint, but only in rerun? That's interesting. And I do wonder what version they have on Plinkog iTunes or on the app or whatever. I don't think I saw them on the preview. I wasn't looking for them, but someone showed me a picture of them and I would know from them, um, you know. And they are in the cup code, but they talk, so they can't be cut out. Uh, we finally get the game and speak, and it's a major key in the episode, but I didn't see in the background of the episode, but I call their cart, go, go, yeah, um, uh, we get to see and talk to the way for Dan's and they have a very modern and relationship, and it's very, very enjoyable, 
go, they can't be cut with cut with cut with cut with cut the third time. We kind of gave them a peek and a half, kind of like, the time won't be cut, but they cannot be go, we do go a talk here. So they can't really go with them uh, for, for most people, normal people, look the third time we know about them. And they then keep on checking up Coco Channel Auto being a real member of that. Anyway, uh, but anyway, so yeah, we got to have the usual high energy entertainment you can find in Kennedy, but a lot of great dialogue jokes. And I really like Milo Ventura and Kentner, who I uh, like Melissa Wehmer from the one, but she really doesn't like a lot. They don't have anything weird going on. She looks like Katie from Team Universe, and she doesn't help. You know, she did a kind of good job with the character, and they they really nice together. You feel in the opening watching the show, and it's, it's cute. You know, they got a nice relationship going on. It's in contrast to kind of quite a relationship, but kind of like get kind of broke from time. But here, they really like each other. You know, I like that a lot. And what really makes me up go is the ending, which one we get a moral about Phantom, which is like no one ever, not a reaction. I feel like it talks more specifically about newbie and how things are of like label are hurting as long as someone like Michelle like all that matter again. And that guy like Nugget Fever because of my attachment to the kind of thing, you know, I like the full family again. And then a good night nice moment where for the first time it kinda of play Wilma well, Regal thing for not next night drama, but kind of because they've had a sweet undertone, but not an explicit sweet moment. Like some of it like undertone, like Maybe a bit with Luca and um, my little room for the enemy, but it's not like we had a moment. You really kind of do, not a huge moment, but a moment where, you know, and uh, that's the first time where we kind of like stop and play knowledge that he, uh, like, but it all mattered at the time he spent together. Yeah, for the time. <laughs> you know, and that is what made one of my favorite so far because being all the youthful good action and all the fandom reference and the Again, watch like you're gonna ever hang a message in the way too. We definitely, you know, we to tangle a lot of everything. So, I think Aqua Pie will be beat once they have deeper moments and a lot, a lot of jokes. But, this is my favorite so far. The first one I gave, I don't know, not sure, great, but close to great. At least, I would probably read it. It becomes, it is, I can't really find any fault in it. And, again, I don't, I don't feel for it. I think I'm totally fine. I, I feel a little, but I still won't quite. Right, but like they're more seeming to be pretty entertaining, I think great, you know. And I feel like as we go on, we'll get more ambitious up yeah, because that's great and uh, quite being firm eventually did. I don't know what the first we get probably I broke bar the he and turned to like Gary or the vocal man ambition gonna have a lot more going on. But anyway, Down Cool Files is very good, very funny and quite sweet and very interesting. So yeah, I really like that one. Also very good song and it's without the home file theme, so it's not a weird song, it's a, and it's a catchy theme song, definitely, um, I don't know who we stopped and going, but I, they were lining in the credits, I had time to beat them all, so, but anyway, I really like the cup a lot, the first one I just feel like, it's really to think about, cause yeah, more about it close to me, it's more to me than but it had a own spin on it with, you know, we want things different, and again, I feel like it's more relevant to me, I'm like, the kind of thing of shame since that, I'm going to air in 2010, Anyway, so on to the second episode, The Note, written by... Shit, I remember. Jim Bernstein, yes. Um, go in this episode. In this episode, Milo, basically, we find out that, of course, he had Dr. Note that you can get from the student birthing law. Um, and he had basically tag a big note for the end of the month so we didn't have to be honest a lot of notes. Of course, they lose the note and have to shake it all over town in order to get them accused. You know, going and get the hub back and whatever. Um, they kind of call this one. Uh, a shorter one, but a background one, like the Don't Break Me Kong. They can I call them. Not my favorite. Fun Kong, though. Um, not much scale out of this one, though, because this one go back to basic, but also kind of for that one that go all around, you know, you know, they go all around town, and they're, they can all around, like, really funny, it got a lot of very entertaining jokes in it, and we get introduced to, um, Elliot the Crocking Guard, voiced by Christian Slater, who is the Crocking Guard, who took on, like, Milo for obvious reasons, and there's some great jokes they do of them, you know, you know, he, you know, he never, he, he never sleep, and he sleep with a little gun. Thought flying, wait, if you don't, if you never sleep, why do you sleep, how do you sleep, you're not flying, very recklessly, right? Again, they're called great dialogue of that. It's the dialogue that made the show kind of work, because the hair drink has just 
are kind of chunky, but still nice. You know, it's, you know, and I feel like that could kind of carry the show regardless of what happens. You know, I think that we're thinking we'll get a little stale, but I've never had that than the incompetent at least. You know, and that kind of all could do to the weird, like, agent guys who are like, they're, I don't know what they're doing. They have some great jokes and it's sort of dark one, but one that go back and becomes less dark. But they're like watching over the plank and do we think it's like no idea who they are or what we're purposing. Like they interact with story once but not a lot. So we'll probably get a place for them at some point. While they're very funny, I don't know what they're doing here. Um don't know what they came out before. They go wild goose shake, but very entertaining one. Of course the front time be funny kind of it has a lot of humor and funny kind of caught up. Along the location stuff that the first step could add. So it keep things, you know, you know, keep things, you know, um, it mix things up a bit by you going all out to kind of a lot of stuff going on and very funny. Ah, ah, yeah, new time to a minute from Kong VR's running longer. Not doing a VR. Keep going. What do you do? Be done before 8. Fine. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, they definitely mix things up the magic gun all out and dig up. And uh, I'll call we get roll 53 Milo in the. Yeah, could take a lot out. They clearly didn't give us enough of roll 53. <laughs> it's very odd. <laughs> oh, another comment about the gun file. Apparently, we're a good pet feeder in town. I get Blythe brought it over to Jefferson County. <laughs> Oh, that DOG going to it. DOG got in the note. DOG for more help in this one. More than DOG and Pigaco just popped up and they go, DOG have to be here. You know, DOG actually helped out. So, yeah, and, and um, cause I'm going to see how many got repetitive because they repeat the DOG go home up free time. Here, uh, they don't do it in the camp because they want that he helped out. And, uh, God, I'm going to find out he, um, he can't do the pet feeder and I can watch the camp until the end. Um, Go down to the note, we'll go pretty fun up go to go. We got an go we go very well this definitely fair half hour show so far. We got go back here a little more plot than you will and I'll go a bit more of a fan of a quick moment and I'll go back and that you go great comedy and long with some stuff as new. I don't think things are getting too stale yet. I think you know, again, the tag over time because they keep doing it exactly like even like you know, then yeah I'll get stale. But for the first quarter that was fine. I feel like you're allowed to do stuff simple and just doing similar things for like quarter or even half of the game. Because you're thousand of golf and they kind of think you can do. But there is a certain point where you get tired of that. So, and this I'm going to kind of get a hint at the storyline. And I feel like the show will come more interesting. I feel like the storyline is there to keep them dating so they can like. But the storyline is there, then you can come back for it. It's, it's probably not going to be too deep of a storyline. It involved potential potential from the future, but who knows how deep that go? Maybe that has a lot more going on than we think. So, but we'll crop that bridge when we come to it. Just enjoy it while you can. And so long as we'll keep the game like a character and humor, then I feel like we're not even worry about for a while. And by the time it does start to slow down, I feel like we're still going to kick in. And again, I think we're for roughly stuck to a full man for the fourth game. You know, for, for the most part, but New Jet Town a bit bring up, and they kept the thing. The humor and the character moment kept me in the for especially for good and spite of, you know, going wrong. And there were no, plus mention there were other characters that are a thing going on, you go, yeah. But hopefully the show can keep that up, but so far I don't think it's even a thing for a while because they know how to clean up the humor and give us some great story. And they give a first great episode, a really good one. I'm gonna call it great, but, you know, it's not like the main invention, it's mildly great. So, yeah, that is Vicky Found Murphy. A lot of fun this one, and definitely keeping up that unique humor the guy can bring. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, um, so, the next week, well, weird thing is that they're going to have to play for next week, but it's not on my TV thing, it just looks a rerun of, um, yeah, it just kind of a rerun of, um, one of the episodes, but, let me just check with the Nancy Press Week thing again. Uh, we should have had it up to begin with. Um, 
Doesn't he practically had that from playing for you know, a minute? Yeah. 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 I should have the perfectly up to begin with. Okay. Do do do. Ah! I know I have my palm to palm too, but I don't care. Come on. Okay. Get to that tweet. Yes. What the? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Party apparel slash move operate opera opera a turn. Yeah, I have it listed right there, but it's not on my TV thing. So I forgot the press link when. Clearly, they're more true than this thing. But I'll see you next week for that, because sounds like to be an interesting guy that will call. So I shall see you guys then. And um, this Saturday, they'll peace me falling in tomorrow. Crack it, be all gone. Griffin the brush off. Okay. You, Dr. Goner, there. I hope you give him a creative family for you guys.